Monday, May 12, 2003, and this is the beginning of an interview with Vance Meyer at his home at 402 East Hi Stevenson Street in Marion, Indiana. Mr. Meyer is 76 years old, having been born on October 25, 1926. My name is Natasha Maddox, and I'll be the interviewer. Vance Meyer is my church acquaintance. Mr. Meyer, could you state for the recording what war and branch of service you served in? I served in the infantry in World War II. Um, what was your rank? I was a staff sergeant. Um, where did you serve? In the Philippines. Okay. What were you doing before joining the Army? Well, I was a farmer. And I was in high school. And were you married or were you single? I was single. Where were you and what were you doing when the war began? I was ice skating on the Miss Seminole River. And what did you do to prepare to join the military? Well, I was drafted. Okay, that's my next question. <laughs> okay, if you were drafted, how did you feel about that at the time? Real good. And why is that? Well, I felt like everybody should go to the Army. Okay. Yeah, everybody did. How old were you when you were enlisted? I was 17 years old. Okay, and where were you living at the time that you joined the military? I was living on a farm in Matthews. Um, what was the most frightening thing about leaving to go into the service? Uh, I really wasn't frightened. Okay. Um, why did you choose to join the Army? I didn't join. They assigned me to they the said, Army. Okay. Um, do you recall your first days in service? Yes. What did it feel like? Uh, it's very strange. It's something totally different. Tell me about your boot camp or training experiences. Well, I went to boot camp in, in Anniston, Alabama. 17 weeks of infantry training, infantry combat training, before going overseas. Um, what did your first few days in service feel like? Or, excuse me, I just repeated the question. Uh, what was the most difficult part of boot camp? Say marching. Mm, Why's that? You got tired. Mm, do you remember your instruct instructors? No, I don't. It's been too long. How did you get through boot camp? How did I get through boot camp? Yes. Very good. Um, how long were you in basic training? 17 weeks. And what was your military graduation like? Uh, we really didn't have a military graduation. We just served 17 weeks in a boot camp. It uh, wasn't boot camp, but basic training. Boot camp was in our Navy, I think. But 17 weeks of came home on a furlough or overseas. No graduation in any case. Okay. Um, what was the specific unit you were assigned to? Uh, I was assigned to 86th Division. Um, what impact did your unit have on the outcome of World, World War II? <laughs> <laughs> what was the most helpful part of your training? Discipline. Um, which war did you serve in? World War II. Where exactly did you go? All throughout? Well, I went uh, uh, to 
Saipan, Guam, Leyte, uh, Panama Canal, of course the Philippines, Manila. Okay. Uh, what did you do in each of these areas? Uh, when I was in the Philippines, in Manila, I was attached to the 801 Military Police Unit, which uh, we were active in uh, mopping up this war. Um, do you remember arriving and what was it like? Very strange because I had never been out of the country. And, and the country was all tore up. People were living along the roadsides and in the bombed out buildings. So that was the strangest part. So they were bombed before you came? Before I came, yeah. Okay. Uh, what was your first job or assignment? first job assignment after I arrived overseas was training Filipino scouts. And what was your first impression impression of your first assignment? Uh, I really didn't have an impression. In them days you just done what they told you to do. Uh, what were your other jobs or assignments? Well, my other job was uh, I was in a 801 military police unit uh, and, uh, and I was a, I was a provost sergeant in a Japanese prison I guess that's all I can think of right now. okay did you see combat? While no. Okay. So there were no casualties in your unit? Or were there any? Well, there was casualties, but uh, the, the, the combat is when you go out and shoot at each other. Okay. But I was in a unit. We went out and got to Japs out of the mountains after the war, and those guys got shot, but there wasn't combat. Were there many casualties or just? No. Oh, okay. And what are a few of your most memorable experiences from being in the military? Uh, I, I guarded uh, the wife of the general who was in charge of March Batan, General Holmes' wife. That was most memorable. They had him up for wartime, uh, wartime trials, and while she was in the Philippines, I had guarded her. And what are, do you have a few uh, frightening experiences that you remember from military? Uh, not really. What were some of the medals, citations, etc., that you received, and what did you have to do to earn each of them? Okay. The expert after the badge, if that uh, badge is earned by shooting an M1 rifle. Uh, you, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal was a medal you got because you was in the Pacific Theater uh, at the close of the war. World War II Victory Medal is when we won the war, they give us all a World War II Victory Medal for those who were in the uh, in the Philippines at the time. Uh, Philippine Independence uh, Ribbon was a ribbon that they gave us when uh, 
Uh, we were there when the, well, I was there when the Philippines got their independence from the United States. The United States won the war in Japan, and then we gave the Philippines their independence, and I was there uh, when that took place. Honorable service uh, label button, which is a button they give if he was in World War II. I have a few others, but I don't know what they are. It's been too long. Ago. Okay. The Philippine Defense Medal and the Philippine Independence Medal are foreign awards issued by the Republic of the Philippines. The U.S. Department of Army provides only the ribbons for the Philippine Defense and Independence Medals. That's it. Okay. Um, that takes care of that. Did you sustain any injuries at all while in the military? No. Okay. Um, how did you feel about World War II? Uh, I, I felt like that uh, we were attacked and it was every uh, person's obligation to go defend their country. Okay. What did you do as a staff sergeant? Well, I, a staff sergeant is uh, uh, a person that directs uh, other troops in everyday duties. What was your job as a military policeman? Uh, we uh, got the, we went after the uh, Japanese who were still in the mountains and didn't know the war was over. Uh, we controlled the traffic in Manila. Oh, and we were the police at, uh, over uh, American troops, the Filipino troops, and their. We were the main police force in the Philippines at the time. Okay. Um, what was occurring in the Philippines while you were a military policeman? We, uh, we were the, we mopped up after the war, closed the war. Did you stay in touch with any family while away? Very little. And how did you stay in touch with them? Uh, by letter. Okay. What was the food like while in the military? Uh, I was always lucky enough to get real good food. Describe your sleeping and eating facilities. Well, when we were where we could get food, we had a tent and the mess sergeant would uh, supply the food there in the mess camp. And when we were out in the field, why we would eat out of canteens and stand on the line. And then when we were, when we were in places where we couldn't get food, we ate K rations out of the tin can. Uh, did you have plenty of supplies? Yes. Did you feel pressure or stress while in the military? No, uh, I didn't. Was there anything special that you did for good luck? No. How did people entertain themselves? Uh, there wasn't a lot of entertainment, really. What did you do while on leave? I was on leave. Uh, just come home and visited with people I knew. Things in a 19, 20 year old kid. Where did you travel while in the service? Where did I travel? Where 
was your favorite place you traveled to while on the surface? Bagville. And why is that? It was a resort. It was a rich man's resort that was converted into a camp so the soldiers could go up there for a rest. It was just clear up in the mountains. And it was real nice. Do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events? In the service? Yeah. Oh, there was a lot of them. I could really name them. I'd be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were, were there any pranks that you or others would pull? I beg your pardon? Were there any pranks that you or others would pull while in the Oh, we'd pick shaving cream and cereal and you know, buddy's bed. And once in a while, we'd put a snake in the bed. What did you think of officers or fellow soldiers? I really loved all of them. We got along good. Uh, did you keep a personal diary while in the military? No, I didn't. Describe a typical day in the Army. Uh, you get up in the morning at 5 o'clock and you go to bed at eight or nine o'clock, go out and do your duties, guard duty, fighting or whatever they told you to do. That's, every day was different. Uh, how did you cope with the fair battle? Or did you have any fair? You didn't have to battle. Did you? Uh, Did you ever doubt that the Allies would win the war? No, never had any doubt. And why is that? Because uh, I had a lot of confidence in the, in the service, and I just felt we were the best in the world at that time, and it's just a matter of time we go. Do you think that the war could have been prevented? No. And why is that? Because we were attacked, and we didn't have any chance to negotiate or talk about it or anything. What was your biggest accomplishment while in service? Uh, getting out. <laughs> well, do you recall the day that your service ended? Yes. Um, what was it like? And where were you when it ended? Well, my service ended twice. I was discharged in the Philippines. And then I re-enlisted and spent another couple of years, and I came home and was discharged again. How did you feel when you arrived home? Joyful. Uh, what did you do in the days and weeks afterward when you returned home? Oh, I was unemployed for a while, and uh, that was about it. And then I got a job and went to work, settled in. And what was your homecoming like? Uh, there wasn't much of a homecoming because I didn't have a family. I just came home. How did you find um, a house like when you came here? How did I know what? Find like a house or a place to stay when you came home? Uh, I, I went out on the farm and stayed with my uncle for a year and then I got married. My wife How were things different when you returned home? Uh, people were were happier when they were kind of left. Everybody was worried. Mm, did you work or go back to school? I worked. Did you make any close friendships while in the service? Yes. And did you continue any of these relationships? No. Okay. Did you ever join a veterans organization? Yes. What kind of activities does your poster association have? Beg your pardon? Well, are you still in the organization? Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. What kind of activities does that organization have? Well, it's American Legion. They, they do things for the soldiers, help them get their better veterans benefits. And they have American Legion posts where you go and eat fellowship. So you have received veteran benefits? Yes. Such as? Medicine. What did you go on to do as a career after the war? After the war, I just went to work in a factory um, and wound up as a sale. Okay. Um, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Did it influence me? Yeah, like you're thinking about war or the military. Not, not negative. It didn't influence me negative. I always felt positive about the service. Um, do you attend reunions for military? No. Okay. Um, how did your service and experiences affect your life? It, uh, it helped me uh, become disciplined. In other words, if I had a duty to perform, I could have to perform it and get life back. Um, what would you want people to know about this time in history, the time that you were in the war? What would I want people to know? Well, I think that uh, people should know that a lot of fellows sacrificed a great deal for freedom. I shouldn't forget it. Do you think that the war was the moral thing to do? Yes. And why is that? Because we were attacked and they were going to take our country away from us. Try to. Um, what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about World War II? You know, I don't believe people had a misconception about World War II. They knew they were attacked and they had to defend their country. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add that we have not covered in this interview? I'm going to explain my being drafted into the service at 17 years of age. I had been raised in a foster home and didn't know and didn't have a birth certificate. I registered as an 18-year-old thinking that was correct. The Army finally discovered the error and, and since I was so uh, close to my 18 years old, they left me in the service. Remember, this was wartime. The Army obtained my correct birth certificate for the records. Also, I didn't mention that before being shipped to the Philippines, I had paratroop training. 